What's that funny noise? It sounds like an old Wellington boot in a puddle. Look, it's Leroy the Lion. Oh, what's the matter, Leroy? Oh, oh I've lost one of my shoes. Never mind. Well, it's not the shoe I mind about. It's the beautiful roller skate that was on it. Well, you'll have to get your skates on and find it. <laughs> Morris, don't be so unkind. Now, Leroy, it's not the end of the world if you lose a shoe, you know, or a roller skate. Now, let's all sing Cock-a-doodle-doo together and you'll soon cheer up. Cock-a-doodle-doo, my dame has lost her shoe. My master's lost his fiddling stick and doesn't know what to do. Cock-a-doodle-doo, what is my dame to do? Till master finds his fiddling stick, she'll dance without her shoe. Feeling better now, Leroy? Oh, I think so. One more time. Cock-a-doodle-doo, my dame has lost her shoe. My master's lost his fiddling stick and doesn't know what to do. Cock-a-doodle-doo, what is my dame to do? Till master finds his fiddling stick, she'll dance without her shoe. That's better. And look, here's my clever old roller skate. It's brought my shoe back. Oh, I'm so happy. It's like my birthday. When is your birthday, Leroy? Uh, do you know, I can't remember. But there's somebody's birthday I never forget. Who's Leroy? Spot's birthday. It was very quiet in the magic garden, and Spot was sleeping by the big tree. It was his birthday, and Digby and I had planned a special surprise. Suddenly, Spot woke up. You what? he said, stretching his legs. I wonder where Digby and Leroy are. I bet they're in the garden shed. Slowly, he crept up and pushed open the door. Digby and I were down the far end, wrapping Spot's presents. Are you in there? he shouted. We both kept very quiet, and it was so dark inside that Spot couldn't see us. They must be here somewhere, he said. I'll look behind the magic trees. And he ran off into the magic garden. Phew, that was close, I said. Quickly, we finished wrapping Spot's presents and writing his cards. Then we walked back into the magic garden. Spot was running round and round trying to find us. Hello, Spot, said Digby. You what? Where have you two been? He barked. I have been having a nice walk, I said. You what? said Spot. Yes, said Digby, and I've been doing some gardening. It's such a lovely day. And he winked at me. Spot had forgotten all about his birthday. Why are you winking? he said. Don't you know what day it is today, I said. No, said Spot. What day is it? Digby and I began to laugh, but poor Spot just sat on the ground scratching his head. Come on, I said to Spot. We'll show you. All right, he said, and followed us to the garden shed. Close your eyes, said Digby. You what, said Spot. Yeah, all right, but only if you tell me what day it is today. In a minute, I said. I opened the door and led Spot inside. You can open your eyes now, said Digby. Spot opened his eyes and stood back in surprise. It's my birthday, he barked. Are those my presents? Yes, we said. Spot ran over and tore all the paper off his presents. Wow, look at this, he said. A box of my favourite biscuits and a big bone too. Thank you, Leroy. Thank you, Digby. Digby and I felt very clever keeping the surprise from Spot. And Spot was so busy eating his biscuits that he didn't notice Digby and I singing Happy Birthday. But we didn't mind. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. This is my best birthday ever, said Spot, even though I did forget it. <laughs> 
and he ran out into the garden to bury his new bone. Spot's birthday party was such fun, wasn't it, Morris? Was it? I don't remember. Well, you should do. You fell off your chair and landed in the jelly, and then you cried. I didn't. Yes, you did. And you threw jelly at me. I never... Oh, no, I... now, hamsters, settle down. Carol has got a poem for us. Betty at the party. When I was at the party, said Betty, aged just four... A little girl fell off her chair right down upon the floor and all the other little girls began to laugh. But me, I didn't laugh a single bit, said Betty seriously. Why not? her mother asked her, full of delight to find that Betty, bless her little heart, had been so sweetly kind. Why didn't you laugh, my darling? Or don't you like to tell? I didn't laugh said Betty, cos me it was that fell. Look, Leroy, I baked some lovely gingerbread men. Goodness gracious, they look just like real people. Oh, no, they don't. They're just little cakes for eating. Here, have one. Oh, thank you. And while we're eating, we can listen to Nigel's story. The Gingerbread Man. <laughs> A little old woman and a little old man lived together in a little old house. One day, the little old woman baked a gingerbread man. She made him with great care. She gave him raisins for his eyes and his nose. She made him a big, wide mouth out of orange peel. And then she popped him in the oven. When the gingerbread man was cooked, the little old woman took him out of the oven. She made some chocolate icing and gave the gingerbread man a smart little jacket with currants for buttons. But all at once, the gingerbread man jumped off the tray, raced oh. out of the kitchen door and ran down the street. The little old woman called oh, to the little old man. Goes. They ran after the gingerbread man as fast as they could. But he only laughed and sang, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. <laughs> And they could not catch him. Soon, the gingerbread man passed a cow in a field. Mmm, stop, stop, and I'll eat you up. Mmm, she mooed. But the gingerbread man laughed and sang, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. <laughs> and the cow could not catch him either. The gingerbread man ran on and on. He saw a farmer with his goat. Stop! Stop! And we'll eat you up! They shouted. But the gingerbread man laughed and sang, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. <laughs> and the farmer and his goat couldn't catch him either. The gingerbread man passed a barn full of men working. When they smelt the lovely gingerbread, they ran out of the barn. Stop! Stop! And we'll eat you up! They shouted. But the gingerbread man laughed and sang, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. <laughs> By this time, the gingerbread man thought he was the smartest biscuit ever to hop out of an oven. He danced about. No one can catch me, he thought. When a fox came by, the gingerbread man laughed and sang, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. <laughs> but I don't want to catch you, said the fox. I'm being chased, too, by the hunters. Why don't you hop on my tail and we'll escape together across the river? 
So the gingerbread man hopped onto the fox's tail and the fox began to swim across the river. You're too heavy on my tail, called the fox. Jump onto my back. So the gingerbread man jumped onto the fox's back. Then the fox called out, You're too close to the water on my back. Jump onto my nose. And the gingerbread man jumped onto the fox's nose. But when they came to the bank of the river, the fox gave a great toss of his head and a snap of his jaws. The gingerbread man fell straight down his throat. And the clever old fox sang... Yum, yum, what a tasty snack. I caught him, now he'll never come back. Where are you? I'm going to sing. Oh, no, you're not. Why? Because Stephen's going to sing. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and can't tell where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home, dragging their tails behind. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and can't tell where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home, dragging their tails behind them. Wincy spider climbed the water spout. Down came the rain and washed poor spider out. Out came the sunshine, dried up all the rain. Incy wincy spider climbed the spout again. Spider out, out came the sunshine, dried up all the rain. Incy wincy spider climbed the spout again. <laughs> A brave little spider. Yes, when I see a spider in the bath, I always help him out just in case he goes down the plug hole. Even Incy Wincy Spider couldn't climb up our plug hole. Hey, Morris, mm? Carol knows a story about another brave little insect. Does she? Ooh, who? The hard working honeybee. Honey Bee was weary in the heat of the noonday sun. She had been hard at work since early morning. She had burrowed into the sweet-smelling flowers so many times to gather nectar to make honey. How heavy she felt. How hot she was in her brown and yellow striped fur. She flew slowly over the garden to a cool green clearing in the woods. On the edge of the clearing, tall foxglove flowers grew. Come and rest with us, they called. I can't stay long, 
panted Honeybee. The other bees will be waiting at the hive for my pollen and nectar. Rest for an hour or two, smiled the foxgloves. The air will be cooler when the sun goes down. Honeybee crept inside one of the foxglove's bells. Soon she was fast asleep. The sun crossed the sky and sank down behind the trees. A big white moon peeped between the branches. There was a flittering and a fluttering as moths of all shapes and sizes began to dance. Then one beautiful moth landed on a foxglove flower. My, my, said Moth. We don't often see bees in the forest at this time of night. Lost your way, have you? Oh, not really, yawned Honeybee, for she was still very sleepy. But the sun was so hot, and I was so heavy with pollen and nectar. What do you carry all that food around for? asked Moth in amazement. My brothers and I just sip a little nectar when we need it. I take the nectar back to the hive for my sisters to make into honey, and the baby bees eat the pollen, said Honey Bee. Who cares about making honey? Moth waved his feelers scornfully. It's better to be free as we are and dance in the light of the moon. As the moths opened their lacy wings, Honey Bee thought she had never seen anything so lovely. She looked down at her six stubby legs and sighed. The moon paled into a morning sky, and Honey Bee crept out of the foxglove flower, her fur wet with morning dew. She thanked the foxgloves, sipped some dew, and waited for the sun to dry her out. An hour passed, and the shouts of children could be heard. Let's have our breakfast in the wood, they cried. They spread a cloth on the grass. On the cloth, they put a loaf of bread, a dish of butter, and a large pot. Look, cried the girl. There's a bee on the ground. It looks exhausted, poor thing. It's probably hungry, said one of the boys. Give it some honey. Bees like honey. They make it in their hives. It was then that Honey Bee saw the picture on the side of the honey pot. The picture was of something with shining wings and a glossy coat of brown and yellow. It was a picture of her. Honey Bee rose into the air, puffed out with pride. I gathered the nectar to make the honey the children are eating for their breakfast, she buzzed. Moth will never get his picture on a honey pot. Oh, what splendid stripes! What bristling bee's knees! And she flew off happily into the morning mist. Doris! Doris, please come and help! What are you doing? I want to move this table. Um, Leroy, will you give me a hand, please? What are you up to, Morris? Well, you'll see. Now, all together, one, two, three, live! Oh! Oh. Well, you've got the table into the middle of the room. Now what happens? Rhyme time! Hooray! Table talk. Find an old table. Now what can it be? Right way up, upside down, move it and see. Right way up, stand on it, march to and fro. You're king of the castle, let everyone know. Upside down, on your knees, hold tight, don't let go. Your table's tobogganing down through the snow. Right way up, under it, several can squeeze to make a tent snug as a pod with its peas. Upside down, sit in it, huddle together, pretend you're out boating in all sorts of weather. Right way up, stand behind and put things on the top. Your table's a counter and you've got a shop. Upside down, on all fours like lions in the zoo, your table's a cage. Now what else can you do? Oh, that was fun. 
Now let's move the table back to its place. I do like to keep the house tidy. I think the table looks nicer where it is. I don't. Well, I do. Oh, dear. That's the trouble with houses. People always argue about them. Listen to Stephen's story. Painting the house. Once there were three friends called Mr. Oscar, Mr. York and Mr. Blake. They moved into a big old house which had been painted mauve. There was mauve everywhere, on the walls and on the doors. There were mauve window frames and mauve drain pipes. It was a horrid old house. This house needs painting, said Mr. Oscar. Yes, it does, said his friends. We should paint it red, said Mr. Oscar. No, we should paint it green, said Mr. York. No, we should paint it yellow, said Mr. Blake. And they began to shout and squabble. How angry they were. Suddenly, Mr. Oscar ran off to the shops and bought a big pot of red paint. Quickly, the other two friends ran to the shops. Mr. York rushed back with green paint and Mr. Blake rushed back with yellow paint. They put on their overalls, fetched out their ladders and started to paint. At first, they painted slowly and carefully. Then they looked at each other's work and they all began to paint faster and faster. They each wanted their own colour to show up the most. Soon they were all painting very fast indeed. The paint splashed everywhere. It splashed onto their overalls and onto the paths and all over the flower beds and onto the cat who was asleep under a bush. Meow! screeched the cat and leapt away. But the cat tripped up Mr. Oscar. Mr. Oscar grabbed Mr. York's ladder to stop himself falling. Help! shouted Mr. York as he flew off the ladder. His tin of green paint landed on Mr. Blake. Oh! yelled Mr. Blake, who got such a fright that he threw his tin of yellow paint into the air. What a terrible din they made. Paint tins flew everywhere. Red and green and yellow paint splashed over everybody and everything. <laughs> and then all the friends began to laugh. Oh, Mr. York, you are straight red and green and yellow, laughed Mr. Blake. And you, Mr. Blake, are spotted all over in green and yellow and red, cried Mr. Oscar. <laughs> giggled Mr. York. Mr. Oscar, you're a hotchy, blotchy mess of green and red and yellow. Meow, said the cat. His fur stuck out in red and green and yellow spikes, and the colours made everyone so happy that even after they'd cleaned themselves and the cat and the garden, they left the house painted like a rainbow in red and green and yellow. had a happy day. Have you had a happy day, Morris? Yes, it's been scrumptious. Morris! Doris! There's a letter here. Who's it for? Uh, well, I'm not quite sure. It says to, um, M-O-R. Here, let me see. Morris, don't snatch. But the letter's for me. How do you know? Because it says so. Listen to my song. M O R R I then add an S that's Morris my claim to fame is my famous name and my famous sister Doris I'm good at making magic for spells I've got to what it takes I'm good at making rainbows I'm and good at making mistakes oh really M A G I C a magic hamster that's me Though I'm quick as a wink, I just can't think of anyone I'd rather be. 
I am always getting bright ideas, and oh by Doris, I'm boffed. I'm always getting what I want, and, and always getting lost. Oh, Doris. M O R R I, then add an S, that's Morris. M A G I C, Magic Morris, that's me. That's you. M O R R I, then add an S, that's Morris. M A G I C, Magic Morris, that's me. That's you. That's me. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.